Hi there, hope everyone a good day. Welcome back to another video. You know what time it is. We're right at the halfway mark of 2024. Yeah, that's crazy. So let's put everything together and come up with the top 10 basketball shoes released so far this year. We've already had a lot of excellent performers. Some surprises, but this top 10 list, I can tell you right now, I think was pretty easy to do because all 10 of them are firm picks based on my personal experience. Like I wouldn't swap them out for any other ones as of now. At any point of the video, please feel free to drop down your topics to hoop in or your thoughts on any of them mentioned, whether you agree or disagree with my picks. Real quick before we begin, um, we still have so many more hoop shoes to talk about here on this channel. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. That would mean a lot to me. A big majority of the people watching are still not sad. So that's really all I can ask for. All right, I have four honorable mentions. Harden Volume 8, GT Class 3, JB2, and DVD2. Yeah, see, these are top 10 caliber shoes, all four of them, but they didn't even make it for me eventually. Harden Volume 8, as much as I enjoyed it right from the start, it's heavy and not flexible or agile enough to be a perfect rotation shoe. GT Class 3, I lost some of that initial bounciness from Zoom X. On Dusty Quartz, the Academy might grip a little bit better. JB2 is hella comfy and smooth. This colorway I have unfortunately had poor traction. DVD2 has elite traction and cushion actually. It just lacks a little bit of that softness and forgiveness on feet to bring it up even another level, if that makes sense. So out of these honorable mentions, DVD2 from 361 degrees is the closest to my top 10. Which shoes kick the hardens and GT cuts out of the list. Here we go. Starting off at number 10, who I know this one, some of you may have anticipated to be higher. For me, this is a shoe that continuously improves over time to a point where it can now make the top 10. And that is the Anta Kai Wan. Kyrie Irving's first signature shoe after signing with Anta. Cushion with their full length nitro edge foam is delicious, has always been delicious. Step in comfort is quite nice, no pinching or discomfort from any part of the upper. Stability is another highlight. It also doesn't really squeak, but trash and performance slowly improve as you keep playing with them. I'm now fully confident about using the Kai Wan on clean quartz and dusty quartz. I did think the core feel is not so Kyrie-like. Uh, we rarely had this type of a soft missile on the Nike Kyries. But hey, this is not the Nikes, right? I mean, that's the whole point. So if you like something that feels like what Kyrie himself truly wanted on his signature shoe with plenty of details, more than solid performance across the board, you can give these a look. It's heavier than average, but over time, I've gotten used to the weight too. It actually helps stabilize your movements. So it's a nice balance overall. Next one up, I have the KD-17. Nike has had a slow start to the year, in my opinion. Uh, the newest KDs aren't like crazy good in any particular aspect. Uh, well, Traction was pretty damn nice actually. Yeah, it's more of a safe choice. KDs are normally the shoe to avoid for wide footers, but this time it's pretty spacious. The 17 is not very narrow anymore. Materials might not be as secure as the 16, but it's a smoother ride, transitions more fluently from front to back. Uh, heel cushion also provides more feedback as you press down on it. It's quite juicy. Four foot cushion, I still prefer that quick snap you get from the 16. Containment, 16. Otherwise, the 17 is different and mostly wins by being more comfortable. It takes a lot less playing time to break in. Easy to use. Traction is really impressive. For those who didn't have a great experience with the translucent also on the 16, you're good to go with the newest version. Um, I think the solid rubber also might not even be as grippy as the translucent also this time. So lots of unexpected turnouts on the KD-17, but for the positive changes with this fit and comfort, I think it deserves a spot in the top 10 right now. Coming in at number eight, I got another one that could be in the top five really, and that is the Fresh Foam BB V2 from New Balance. There's only one reason that dragged it down a little bit for me, and that is how elevated the shoe feels. I've mentioned it quite a few times before, so I'll make it quick. Basically, you get excellent responsiveness from the Fresh Foam X midsole. Very bouncy, very comfortable, but because of the missile being pretty stacked up on feet, I feel like a lot of it are gonna take some time to get used to how it feels. Stability was iffy at first, 
But once you get used to it, this is a near perfect shoe. Because uh, Traction is also top notch. It's super loud and squeaky. Stops you well on any core condition. And it's also waifu friendly. No stiff corners, no pinching anywhere. Yeah, I just don't know if everybody will appreciate the shoe in this low top era that we're in. But that adjustment period needed is the only concern on the Fresh One BB B2. Huge upgrade from the previous version, I gotta say. At number seven, these came out last December. Uh, I only got it at the very end of last year. So here it's on this year's list. They're still releasing more colorways. Some of them might be quite different based on the upper material used. And that is the All City 12 from Way of Weight. Lightweight, breathable, Full length boom is still one of the best cushioning setups out there. The midsole is caged to the right amount, so you get a nice subtle bounce along with good impact protection. Uh, compared to the All City 11, the material became sturdier, so you don't have to worry too much about it tearing apart easily. It's still stretchy enough. <laughs> now, some colorways might have more fusing than other ones. The differences are pretty obvious, so it really depends on what's more important to you. For good airflow, there are ones like this pink Sunshine State colorway. For a more reinforced upper uh, with more fusing, ventilation might be sacrificed to a certain extent. It also is very durable for outdoor use. I can confirm that as well. The only thing is trash and needs some breaking in if you normally play on very dusty courts like I do. But this is one of the best all around performers on the market at this moment. For guards, for most types of players, you can certainly give these a look. Number six, I actually had these one spot lower than the All Cities earlier in the year. But you know, the All Cities can be quite different by each colorway made. These guys are all the same in terms of traction performance, fit, materials, comfort, and everything. And I guess that's a good thing to be consistent. Um, so I'm talking about the Adidas AE1. Anthony Edwards first ever signature shoe. They also came out around mid-December and for how bouncy and dynamic they are with those big grooves on the bottom, you can't really go wrong with a herringbone also like that. They've been in my rotation ever since, despite the heavy weight. Like they're really heavy. My size 10 and a half pair comes in at a whopping 500 grams. But for some reason, I never felt like these slow me down on the court. Like the hardens at roughly the same weight Sometimes I get tired from wearing it for an extended run. The AE1 has an optimal degree of curvature. It's not entirely flat, but also not too much art support for flat footers like myself. Material provides a consistent and fairly cozy wrap around your feet. They are durable enough in most cases. For something that lasts you a while without changing much from how they wore initially, the AE1 is the answer. Okay, moving into our top five of the year right now. Um, I gotta say, you could make a valid case for any of the first five to be on here too. Uh, at number five is not only my personal favorite, well, one of my personal favorites, but also an easy lock in the top five. I know their availability kind of sucks, however it's just an incredible hoop shoe. A6 Gel Burst 28. They're beginner friendly. You don't have to be an elite level player to be able to enjoy everything the shoe offers. From comfort, cushion, materials to the added art support on this newest version of the line. Great for wide feet, flat feet, light enough for faster players, supportive enough for heavier players. I always compare their flight foam missile to full lens React on the Nike PG6. It absorbs impact very well, and most importantly, this shoe is super comfy. The next spot belongs to a shoe that's almost the complete opposite of the Jalbers. So this one, I think will be so much better for you if you're much better than I am at this sport. I'll explain what I mean by that. Li Ning Li Ren 4 V2. This is the low top version of the regular Li Ren 4 and it's really a top weapon of choice for elite players. As a lightweight low top, it's really bouncy. The carbon fiber plate gives you a springy effect on feet, a nice boost to your jumps. Traction is top tier, simple herringbone pattern, very effective. I got a solid rubber colorway on the Legion 4 high top that is very squeaky. V2, I have a translucent also colorway. It has no squeak, but performs at the exact same level. Doesn't even pick up that at all indoors. Fantastic torsional support and upper rigidity too. And imagine getting all that while this shoe only weighs around 360 grams for size 10 and a half. Top three now, these three are almost interchangeable given how complete of a package they are. But at the end of the day, I do have to rank them in order. Way of weight 11. 
I almost had this at the number one spot. But then if you know me, I never put shoes that have a nasty price tag like this at number one. Anyways, purely judging by its performance, I couldn't find a weakness on the WoW 11. If your basis is great traction, this is way more than sufficient. This GCU also they came up with might even stop you too hard. It's super grippy, extremely squeaky, and just an awesome experience anywhere I go. For cushion, they also went creative with the sandwich construction of the missile, where they stack the carbon fiber plate in between boom. Impact protection, bounciness are all there. The core feel is amazing at the same time. This shoe transitions like a boat. Surprisingly lightweight too, not a heavy or chunky shoe by any sender. So I'm excited for more colorways. And um, performance-wise, this is unmatched this year. At second place, maybe the Dark Horse performer of the year, I have the Big 3 5.0 Quick Pro from 361 degrees. Yep, these technically aren't even their flagship model. They were really trying to push out the Jokic shoe, the Big 3 Future. Signature shoe, they have the AG4 for Aaron Gordon, also an amazing shoe. DVD2 for Spencer Dewey, we talked about it just earlier today. And I take these over any of those. This is also a minimal shoe in terms of weight, but the amount of padding on the interior, like around the collar area, the nicely padded tongue, soft and stretchy material, really give you a plush feeling on feet that conforms to your movements very well in all directions. Traction is already excellent on my pair. Mine has like a half translucent, half solid rubber also. Colorways that have an entirely solid rubber also should only be better, if not the same. For cushion and bounciness, the pro version beats the regular version. And altogether, just an easy to use, low maintenance and versatile hoop shoe. Don't sleep on these. Now what I have on top of this pack list, um, I know we have so many bangers, flagship models of the brand, but this one was like low key the best. Um, given some time to digest everything from my experience, high key still the best. And that is the New Balance Kawhi 4. Trash and arguably best of the year so far. These and the Wave Weight 11 never slip for a second. Always a consistently strong grip. Good against dust too. You know, compared to other elite offerings like the Wild 11, they're easier to use. The upper feels really, really soft, spongy, and comfortable. Breathable as well. Cushion, their dual density fuel cell isn't like a crazy compression, but trust me, it feels a lot more plush and responsive than it seems on the clips. I've mentioned that it isn't entirely perfect. Lateral containment could have been better. Padding could have been improved, but even with those factored in, I still think the upsides are so strong on the Kawhi 4. You get pretty much like a dash shoe out there, uh, but people don't know that you're actually rocking a beast. <coughs> that probably beats theirs. A low key boost in every way you look at it. And there you go, that's my top pick. So that concludes it for my top 10 basketball shoes of the year. As you can see, this is a mid-year update, but man, these 10, I'm gonna have a hard time taking any of them off the list later on, because all of them are just great in their own. Very fun to play in. Perhaps a shocker for my number one pick, the Kawhi's. Way of weight 11 is gonna stay up there for a long time. 361 degrees, most improved brand so far in 2024. I had another favorite shoe to play in, the Tatum 2, but objectively speaking, there might not even be a single category where I can call it elite, so didn't even get to mention it. Lots to look forward to in the second half of the year too, but you know, I've almost never been correct about shoes before actually getting them, like based on their images. So I'm not gonna drop names here, but I'd love to hear your picks for the top performers this year. Did I miss out on any other good ones? Which shoes did you like the most? Please feel free to share with us down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.